guys, 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 guys. We're back. What's up, guys? It's Jessica with the Pet Glider, and we're back for our first video of 2020, coming to you in August. I know we're a little bit late to the YouTube game this year. Um, 2020 has been a year, hasn't it? Man, I hope you guys are doing well. Um, we just want to say how much we miss you, how much we love you guys, how much we have really enjoyed seeing um, the videos and uh, the photos that you've tagged on our Facebook, sharing your experience in quarantine, bonding with your gliders, sending those cute pictures. Um, we've really loved it over here. It has brought a smile to our faces. Um, but we are getting back on our feet. We've been um, making a lot of new products, a lot of website changes, a lot of things we're trying to bring to offer to you guys. And so even though we haven't really been on YouTube, um, we have been trying to do promos on Facebook, um, keep our Instagram active, keep our, our products fresh, and be bringing you guys the top quality service that you are looking for. So um, that being said, there's still a lot more to come. We have some exciting things that are right around the corner. Um, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you are subscribed to us. Sign up for our newsletter, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, all the things. Make sure, um, because we are gonna do some giveaways, we are gonna do some awesome announcements, um, new things in the works, new designs, just not really much I can say about it yet, but it's exciting stuff. If there's something that you guys are looking for, something that you hope that we would carry, um, toy design, treats, you know, something we can make, something we can get, anything we can offer you, let us know because we are in the works of pretty much all of it. So um, let us know what you're looking for. Let me know what kind of videos I can make for you guys. Let us know uh, what we can do to brighten your day because that's what we're here for. Um, so today's video is going to be about basically what is a sugar glider. Uh, we're gonna go over some of the anatomy. I'm gonna pull out uh, a classic glider and show you guys some of the, just the regular features. We get a lot of questions, a lot of questions about um, their anatomy, their biology, you know, their needs, their diet, um, some of their features, some of the things that make them such special animals. And so hopefully you guys will learn something cool today that you didn't know before. Definitely gonna have a lot of awesome material if you're new to gliders. If you are interested in getting gliders, you're gonna learn a lot. So be sure to stay tuned, um, subscribe to our channel. Like I said, let us know what we can do for you in the future. Leave comments, give us a call. Um, yeah, without further ado, let's go get a glider. Joining me today is Roscoe, and he is an example of a classic standard gray sugar glider. He is a prime example, if you would join me up front here, of your most common coloration. See that nice stripe on his back, more black tip towards the tail, um, and some black tips around his feet as well. Now we get a lot of questions about uh, vet care and some medical questions regarding sugar gliders. So pretty cool. Um, these guys are not disease-bearing animals. So they don't require any type of annual vaccines or a whole lot of maintenance in that regard. Uh, they have very, very densely packed fur, which actually makes them hypoallergenic. And it makes it um, so that they don't carry fleas or mites. They really can't harbor those things um, with the way that their fur is. Um, but hypoallergenic is a super important feature for a lot of people. Now they do have sharp little nails. It's kind of like kitten nails. And so they can definitely puncture the skin. And so your skin might be irritated if you don't keep your glider's nails trimmed really well. It is important to keep their nails trimmed for several reasons. Um, so you might want to help find a, a local vet who can help you with those nail trims. And you can even learn to do it on your own. Um, but besides that, you would only need to have a vet on hand for any case of emergency. You're always going to want to have a vet who's capable of treating any of your animals that you have. Um, but they won't have any annual checkups, vaccines, or things like that that are required for these guys. So super cool. Hey buddy. Sugar gliders are extremely social creatures. They're what we call colony animals. So out in the wild they live in a big colony or a group of mini gliders. And they have a lot of complex um, ways that they communicate to each other, many different vocalizations. Um, you might hear some of those from your pet sugar gliders. And I am going to play some sounds here in a second so that you guys can hear what some of those noises might be. Um, but keeping in mind that they're colony animals, it's very, very important to make sure that your glider always has a companion. Um, so here are some examples, some audio recordings that we got from our facility.
Now, if you guys can take a look on his head here, he doesn't quite have a bald spot anymore, but there is a little bit of thinning hair right there between his eyes. I don't know if it's very prominent, but male sugar gliders, they have scent glands on top of their head and even on their chest. Now, uh, Roscoe here has been neutered, and so his hair is beginning to grow back in over that scent gland. But if you see a big bald spot, most likely that's because it is a male sugar glider who is intact and still uses those scent glands. So when you have those spots, uh, those gliders will rub their scent, they'll rub their chest, and they'll use that to mark their territory. And so that's completely normal. If you do have an intact male, um, that would be something that you'd see. If you were looking to get another glider, introduce those gliders. You're not sure if, you're, if your glider is intact or not. Um, that bald spot is a clear sign to be able to tell you. Um, and if you do have an intact male, you don't want to necessarily get another glider to introduce. You want to make sure that your glider gets neutered before you get them a companion. Um, so as I said, when they get neutered, his hair is going to begin to grow back in. Usually takes about six months for the testosterone to completely wear out of their system. And then uh, neutered males, for all intents and purposes, as far as their personalities, they're basically going to be like females at that point. Um, they're not as uh, territorial, and they're not looking to breed, and so they're pretty laid back. And you can introduce neutered males, you can introduce females. Um, you might still see a little remnant of the bald spot, just like this guy, but they will be able to basically um, just be friends with other gliders when they get introduced to new ones. And hold you, buddy. If you can see this skin flap in between his feet here, that's what we call a patagum. There you go, bud. A patagum is what they use um, to glide or fly. Now these animals, they don't really fly, but they do get that name sugar glider because of that skin flap. And so they'll go up um, to very tall tops of trees in the wild and they'll spread out those wings and that little skin membrane, it'll basically be like a wing. And so it catches the air as they glide down. And that's where they get that name the glider from. You wanna go down? No? Okay. Um, so those, those skin membranes are very, very fragile. That is a reason that you can't put harnesses on gliders. It will actually um, rip their skin to have that um, compression, have that constriction in between their legs. So you want to make sure you don't use harnesses. Um, they have some pretty unique needs, these animals. They're not exactly able to have most small animal um, supplies and recommendations. And so definitely want to consult a sugar glider expert if you have any questions about things like harnesses. A lot of people hear about harnesses on the internet. Unfortunately, they even sell them for gliders, and so there's all kinds of things to learn about these animals. And so he did a good job showing you that patagum, but there's one more feature I want you guys to see. His tail here is what we call a prehensile tail. Now, you're not really going to be able to tell because he's not holding on to anything. But that tail being prehensile, it means um, grasping or finger-like. And so some other animals they have prehensile tails would be possums, certain species of monkeys. Um, basically, that's an extra kind of appendage, almost like an extra hand. They can use that um, to grab things in the wild. They take leaves back to their nests. They might take little branches or something that they want to use in their nests. Um, but it's also very, very helpful for balance when you're running around in the treetops. Um, that prehensile tail, it can't exactly hold their entire weight. They're not going to hang upside down by it. It's a very, very useful tool um, for these guys to have. Speaking of tools also, they have opposable thumbs. So they're excellent climbers. They're super well adapted to being able to run around the treetops, glide, grab, run, keep going. Um, they have excellent balance and they will use you like a human tree. Sugar gliders are omnivores, which means that their diet is going to consist of a big variety of different nutrients. Um, of course, fruits and vegetables, a good source of protein, um, but there's also some different supplements that we need to give them in captivity in order to replicate the things that they would be eating naturally out in nature. Um, so one of the greatest examples of that is their name, Sugar Glider. They got that name because they're actually known to be peeling back the branches um, in the eucalyptus forests where they come from, and they will be drinking the tree sap that comes out of those branches. Um, so they actually do get pollen and different things in their diet that we need to include in their vitamins, make sure that they have an appropriate source of calcium, um, some probiotics to be able to digest properly, and a whole bunch of different things that are included so that we can adequately provide all of those nutrients to them. So the vitamins are super important to make sure that we're completing these guys' range of nutrients. And with proper care and diet, they can live almost 15 years in captivity. Now we here at the Pet Glider are here for you. We love being able to help uh, answer any of your questions and educate people to really be able to be prepared for their gliders, 
make the choice, you know, if gliders are a good choice for you and your household. Um, answer any of your questions that you might have so you know exactly what you're getting into before you jump into this commitment. So if you're anywhere along your journey, making a decision to get a sugar glider, starting a colony, getting a new addition, how do you pick the gliders that are best for you, we would love to give you any advice that we can. So you can send us an email, uh, we'll get back to you as soon as possible. You can give us a call, we're open at the moment on weekdays um, from nine to four, and that phone number is 713-446-4415. You can always check our website for updates. Um, future store hours might be changed, things of that nature, but reach out to us for sure, and we would love to help you out. Hope you guys are staying safe, have a great day, and let us know what we can do for you.